Salutations, and welcome to part 4 of the Science of Creation. Like our previous webisode, we have an excerpt of the work from the author of Furuunu in regards to the science of absolute nature. This work was originally authored in 1996 and is validated by modern science in the realm of physics, quantum physics, chemistry, and biology which in Western academia are separate sciences. But to the carbon organic cosmological mind, they are all one in varying degrees of vibrational manifestation. We would advise that you watch our previous content is as each webisode builds upon the next, and we also suggest you take notes and research our information for your own mental satisfaction. Finally, we politely ask that you hit the subscribe and notification buttons so you can be notified when we release new webisodes. With that, we hope you enjoy our latest video. Now let us begin. The one supreme being is nature absolute meaning nature, whole and complete. The one supreme being is absolute nature that is infinite in all directions and eternal. Of course, infinite means endlessness in space, and eternal means endlessness in time as well as having no beginning. There are many gods, but only one supreme being, and that is omnipotent, omnipresent, omniscient nature, also known as the all in all. Absolute nature is all space, all matter, and all time, and the three are one and inseparable. Absolute nature is all persons, all places, and all things past, present, and future. Of course, all space is endless vacuum, emptiness, and nothingness in all directions. All matter is endless somethingness and occupant of space in all directions. And all time is endlessly continuity and keeper of the existence of all space and all matter in all directions. Therefore, the true definition of matter is anything and everything that occupies space, and the true understanding of this definition of matter does mean that all spirit beings, gods, and goddesses who exist must be parts of absolute nature, and may be called the angels within religion or Netaru within ancient Tamarian cosmology of the One Supreme Being. The One Supreme Being exists by opposites called nothingness, which is in the vacuum and some thingness known as matter, controlled by energies called brain newts and reason, and instincts and characteristics known as laws and cycles. Reason is the supreme energy produced by brains. Brain newts grow brains and brains produce thinking and reasoning. Brain newts are the gods in the matter of absolute and they pervade all matter in one degree or another and make all persons, places, and things related. Although brain newts can never be seen with the naked eyes, nor with a microscope, you can see with them, hear with them, smell with them, taste with them, and feel with them emotionally and physically. Brain newts grow brains who are their visible physical representatives, and this means that brain newts are mental, spiritual, and physical for all their practical purposes. Brains melt down brain newts into workable active energy called mind and mentality. Part of who may be reason and reason is the active mind energy who creates all persons, places, and things, whether they be artificial or natural, while using other energies as well as reason himself and herself. The term brains melt down brain newts simply means a transfer from a higher state of energy to a lower state of energy, or simply put neutrino to neuron as we will clarify shortly. It is true that brain newts are magic and magnetic particles of matter. Brains are the mediums of brain newts and reason or reasoning is the mental process of figuring something out. Naturally or artificially before anything can be created for the first time by whatever means, the form it will take in the formula or the material that will be used to constitute it must be decided, and the only one who can do this is reason. When we use the term reason we refer to the divine universal mind. Reason is made up ray, meaning to do again and suns being the galactic intelligent life producing orbs with the continual process of birth, life and death. All true stars of the universe are suns, which do not have a solar system orbiting around them. These true stars function as just stabilizers and light and life givers in the universe. However, those suns like Earth's sun in this part of the universe are growers and centers of solar systems. The suns are self-created, meaning self-grown, and are self-existent. The most potent ether which we will discuss in upcoming webisodes manifests as black, Therefore, the bodies of the suns are jet black. These suns, or galactic orbs, put the rest of the universe in order by growing planets, satellites, etc. 
These suns grow by attracting more matter and changing the atomic count of that matter through the process of transformation. The suns are like plants would grow in the soil of chaos matter with brains or simply divine intelligence and the other universal bodies are planets meaning smaller plants slash planets being grown. Of course, reason or divine intelligence has different degrees and levels up to the cosmic reason and the cosmic reason has opposites such as Nous and Zeus. Before we continue let us explore several terms introduced within the previous passages. The first being brain newts and what is exactly meant by the term brain newts grow brains. Now from physics perspective neutrons or neutrinos are subatomic particles that bond together with protons to form the nucleus of an atom which give the atom its atomic mass. The neutron is a subatomic particle which has a neutral, not positive or negative, charge and a mass slightly greater than that of a proton. Protons and neutrons constitute the nuclei of atoms. Since protons and neutrons behave similarly within the nucleus, they are both referred to as nucleons. In 1844, Michael Faraday used the term to refer to the central point of an atom. Ernest Rutherford proposed the modern atomic meaning in 1912. The nucleus of an atom consists of neutrons and protons, which in turn are the manifestation of more elementary particles, called quarks, that are held in association by the nuclear strong force in certain stable combinations of hadrons, called baryons. The neutrino in particle physics is considered an elementary particle. We discussed in the previous webisode that the netaru are the subatomic etheric guardians presiding over the elements of the physical realm. A chemical element is a chemical substance that cannot be broken down into other substances by chemical reactions. The basic particle that constitutes a chemical element is the atom. Elements are identified by the number of protons in their nucleus, known as the element's atomic number. The human brain is made up of these elements and within the brain center you have the basal ganglia, also known as the basal nuclei. Basal comes from the root base, basic or elementary, forming the base or point of origin and nuclei the plural of nucleus and the nucleus simply means in physics the central part of an atom, usually made up of protons and neutron and within biology the specialized part of a cell that controls its growth. Now within the brain of the human, the nucleus is similar to the nucleus of the cell because the brain and the nucleus of both dictate what the person or cell does. The nucleus controls eating, movement, and reproduction same as the physical brain, and without a brain or nucleus the cell or living organism will die. The nucleus is often referred to as the control center of the cell since this structure ultimately directs the cell's many activities. So we can clearly see the relationship between the neutron, a subatomic particle, neutrino, an elementary particle, and the word neuron, which is related to any form of brain science. And interestingly, the neuron network is very similar to the universal network of galaxies. So when the term brain newt is used in this body of work, it denotes high energy neutrinos as they descend into their lowest energy state, manifesting from a high energy neutrino to a lower denser physical neutron on into neurons. Another word introduced is the term noose. Noose is a concept from classical philosophy, sometimes equated to intellect or intelligence, for the faculty of the human mind necessary for understanding what is true or real. Alternative English terms used in philosophy include understanding and mind, or sometimes thought or reason, in the sense of that which reasons, not the activity of reasoning. It is also often described as something equivalent to perception except that it works within the mind, the mind's eye. It has been suggested that the basic meaning is something like awareness. In colloquial British English, noose also denotes good sense, which is close to one everyday meaning it had in ancient Greece. The noose performed a role comparable to the modern concept of intuition. Finally, the term brain spelled B-R-A-N-E-S not B-R-A-I-N-S is found in what is referred to as brain cosmology which refers to several theories in particle physics and cosmology related to string theory superstring theory and M theory. The central idea is that the visible three-dimensional universe is restricted to a brain inside a higher dimensional space called the bulk also known as hyperspace. Much like the human being is a third dimensional object with a brain inside that provides access to a hyperdimensional realm called the mind. 
The Ekparatic Universe is a cosmological model of the early universe that explains the origin of the large-scale structure of the cosmos. The model has also been incorporated in the Cyclic Universe Theory, or Ekparatic Cyclic Universe Theory, which proposes a complete cosmological history, both the past and future. The original Ekparatic model was introduced by Justin Curry, Bert Overt, Paul Steinhardt, and Neil Turok in 2001. Steinhardt created the name based on the ancient Greek word ekparosis, conflagration, which refers to a stoic cosmological model in which the universe is caught in an eternal cycle of fiery birth, cooling, and rebirth. The theory addresses the fundamental question that remains unanswered by the Big Bang inflationary model what happened before the Big Bang? The explanation, according to the ekparotic theory, is that the Big Bang was actually a big bounce, a transition from a previous epoch of contraction to the present epoch of expansion. The key events that shaped our universe occurred before the bounce, and, in a cyclic version, the universe bounces at regular intervals. The ekparotic theory hypothesizes that the origin of the observable universe occurred when two parallel brains collided. We will go into this further on our webisode covering the Big Bang. There are parts of nature that exist as universes, while other parts exist as chaos, then the parts that existed as universes exist as chaos, while the parts that existed as chaos exist as universes. In other words, order and disorder exist at the same time in nature, but not in the same place. Then order and disorder alternate back and forth by exchanging places via growth and decay. When the summer cycle comes to the chaotic parts of nature, universes sprouts and grow in the same way as trees throughout the existence that has been disorder. However, when the winter cycle of existence comes to orderly parts of nature, the universes crumble and return to primeval chaos, while other universes in other places are beginning to grow. A universe is not something that is mechanically made. It is a growth in nature as natural as a plant growing. It is the nature of nature that starts a universe growing, and the nature of nature also starts a universe to crumble. It is very important that you realize that nature exists in circles and cycles of limited durations. A universe sprouts and grows because the summer of existence has returned to that part of nature under the guiding forces of the Ijijai whom we will explain in later webisodes covering the creators. The origin of a universe takes place in this manner. Imagine a very thick black carbon-like smoke or condition existing in very vast areas of space as a thorough mixture of gases, very fine soil chemicals, and all the other types of elements. This conditional environment is what we refer to as primeval chaos. When the summer season returns to this area like a seed planted, but waiting for spring to arrive, the gases and chemicals and all active elements, which had been floating aimlessly in space, begin to accumulate in a central point. These active elements flow aimlessly because there is no gravitation at that time, and there is no universal body anywhere near to attract or pull them. The many active elements, gases, and chemicals of nature, by nature of nature, continue to aggregate, combine, and collect to a central point. And when some of the very active elements existing in nature has been focused into the same place or point, a universe or seed is formed, and then a spontaneous fire begins. And that seed is the beginning of one of the many suns which are the original creators in the form of celestial universal bodies, or as the author refers to in this body of work. Orbs. For those who require scientific clarification of this phenomena published by Fru Unu and within the parchment called Solar Biology by Haru Hotep Tar, let us provide a basic scientific definition. Star formation is the process by which dense regions within molecular clouds in interstellar space, sometimes referred to as stellar nurseries or star-forming regions, collapse and form stars. As a branch of astronomy, star formation includes the study of the interstellar medium and giant molecular clouds as precursors to the star formation process, and the study of protostars and young stellar objects as its immediate products. It is closely related to planet formation, another branch of astronomy. Most stars do not form in isolation, but as part of a group of stars referred as star clusters or stellar associations. Higher density regions of the interstellar medium form clouds or diffuse nebulae where star formation takes place. None of this is random, even the chaos is organized chaos denoting a greater intelligence summed up as the nature of nature within absolute nature, the all. 
The origin of the universe is ether, which is the combination of all existing chemicals and gases that has been termed as nine ether. As mentioned, we will be dedicating a webisode to this concept. Thus far, we have hoped to convey that the origin of the universe is as simple and as natural as the growth of a tree. The nature of nature is the energies of nature doing what comes natural. When you begin to understand the nature of nature, the ignorance of yourself will be destroyed. The nature of nature is motivator and the activator within existence. These parts of nature exist as universes, atom, while other parts exist as chaos, none. The reason we had to clarify universal brain formation is in order to gain a further understanding of the five levels of gods that exist within the universe or as we put in our first video of the series, a hierarchy of energies. In the Sacred Wisdom of Tehuti Chapter 4 Paragraph 4 entitled The Mental Universe it states, The universe is mental and physical held in the mind of the all which are in all. There are five main levels or hierarchy of gods and goddesses of absolute nature, the one supreme being. The first level is brain nude gods and goddesses who are in all matter of infinite nature in various degrees and they are ethereal and produce brains. Brains produce reason and reason produces entities and organisms, persons and beings by way of brain newts and brains. Brain newts are the highest quality of matter that can exist and are thereby the gods and goddesses in all matter at the highest level. Brain newts are spontaneous and efficacious, meaning they are automatic when conditions in nature call for movement and they are able to do what is necessary to fulfill the requirements of their laws and cycles. Being microscopic and macroscopic means that the brain newts can never be seen with the microscope nor with the naked eye. But you can see with them, taste with them, hear with them, smell with them, think with them and feel with them, emotionally and physically. Brain notes are magic and magnetic particles of matter who is nature's ultimate powers who do all the creations through brains and reason. As a brain is formatted by brain notes, reason develops and does its work. There are many gods and goddesses, but only one supreme being and that is absolute nature, infinite in all directions and eternal. The second level is the orb gods and goddesses who by way of brain newts, brains and reason, grew the chaotic matter of absolute nature into creation order. The orb gods and goddesses are universal orbs and bodies like the stars, planets and satellites of the universes and the universes themselves. When the author uses the term orb, with today's technology these galactic orbs are now being captured on camera. An example is the power of the Hubble Space Telescope has resolved the cluster into a multitude of glowing orbs, each a colossal nuclear furnace. M4 is relatively close to us, lying 7,200 light years distant, making it a prime object for study. It contains several tens of thousand stars and is noteworthy in being home to many white dwarfs, the cores of ancient, dying stars whose outer layers have drifted away into space. There are galaxies of universes of infinite nature, like the galaxies of stars in the gigantic universes. The third level is the spirit gods and goddesses produced by the brains of the universal orbs, such as the stars, planets, and satellites of the universes of eternal nature. The brains of universal orbs are located in their centers and they produce spirit beings called original spirit gods and goddesses by brain concentration, and spirit beings multiply by division. Meaning male and female ether energy organisms divide part of themselves and unite those male and female parts and formulas into a single spirit organism or entity. Spirit gods and goddesses are programmers and controllers in absolute nature and may be called the angels of the one supreme being. Spirit beings do not physically create like brain newts, brains and reason. But they do create good or evil conditions and smells and curses that control people's lives and also the welfare. The fourth level of gods and goddesses is indeed the flesh and blood peoples. The original flesh and blood gods and goddesses are born from the nine ether clay womb of mother goddess earth, which is next to her center and extends to the source of the Nile River in equatorial Africa. These flesh and blood original people known as evolutionary tar or the tar Dene did not have sexual intercourse for reproduction until the evolution process began. The fact that these beings evolved on the planet they were the original creators in flesh and blood and there was no flesh and blood mothers to nurse the first flesh and blood beings. 
On the planet thus these being had to be strong enough to take care of themselves. On early earth there were no poisonous vegetation nor animal, fowls of prey, etc. These pygmies called tar and egg had no danger to confront them and anything they could eat or drink was suitable for food. These dwarf deities who were much like Bess and Ta could not die because everything was living as the atmosphere of early earth was electrified with what is referred to as nine ether and was strong and mentally nursing. After evolution began, these gods or goddesses procreated the carbon organic Afar Inca slash Amor Inca race by sex activities. They die out and become extinct by sinking into Mother Earth, but they returned later as races of people of which the carbon organic tribes' families and clans are their evolutionary descendants and animals of nature. The demigods and goddesses are the fifth level of the royalty and elites of absolute nature. A god is a male organism once created and organized. He never ceases to exist in one form and formula or another until the universe of nature disintegrates and of course, a goddess is the female version of a god definition. A god and goddess are mental and spiritual and can become physical by incarnation or magic. A demigod is a spirit god of lesser rank than an original spirit god and he was procreated by spirit to spirit reproduction and the same goes for a demigoddess in the female sense. An original spirit god or goddess is one who was created by brain concentration at the center of a universal orb. A different level of the demigod category is when a spirit god or goddess becomes an incarnation or a reincarnation by entering a human being and dilating himself or herself throughout the physical body, including the head of that person. And other different lesser levels of semi-godhood can be created that incarnate god or goddess has offspring with another incarnation or reincarnates or with chosen by nature human beings. Nature royalty is determined by blood lineage flowing from the incarnations of gods and goddesses and the kinship of demigods and goddesses to their ancestry. If a person is a natural born king, a natural born queen, a natural born priest, or a natural born leader, by nature, he or she learns in the proper place and at the proper time, because these people are royalty of absolute nature and thereby obligated to learn and practice positive nature knowledge, including the laws and also standards of nature, and be able to lead people in the right way. These facts are especially true now that the moon cycle and evolution has ended and the sun cycle and revolution has begun. The carbon organic African races are the direct descendants of the original flesh and blood gods and goddesses who existed in time immemorial. Those gods and goddesses sexually procreated with the African race before they became extinct. That is to say before they died out they metamorphosed into other persons and things after death. The carbon organic African race, the gods and goddesses who reproduced us were born from the source of the Nile River at equatorial Africa whereas the progenitors of other human races originated from the waters of Indonesia. The carbon organic African races are people who grow genuinely kingly woolly hair on their heads by nature. The African race also called the Ethiopian race and the black race has kingly woolly hair because the gods and goddesses who sexually procreated us had kingly woolly hair.